Okay, all right, enough with National NVIDIA Day. They weren't the only company that reported tonight. We got results from Salesforce, the king of the enterprise software space, a group that has been struggling for months thanks to constrained tech budgets, clients trying to figure out what they actually need in a world full of generative artificial intelligence. Last time Salesforce reported, the stock just got crushed. And while it's been rebounding since then, we needed to see some really good numbers to validate that move. Tonight, that's exactly what we got. A fantastic quarter. Management raising their earnings guidance, bidding on cash flow, revenue margins, a great prelude to Dreamforce in just a few weeks. But don't take it from me. Let's check in with Mark Benioff, the co-founder, chair, and CEO of Salesforce to learn more. Mr. Benioff, welcome back to Mad Money. Mark, you just reported an amazing quarter. Now, there's been a transformation going on at Salesforce, which has been able to drop a lot of money to the bottom line. But at the same time, last quarter, you yourself said that there was some weakness. You felt that the environment couldn't be overcome. What has changed? Because this number indicates that either the environment's gotten better or you've gotten better or both. Jim, it's great to be with you again. And I'm so thrilled to deliver this fantastic quarter. You can see the numbers. It's just incredible what our team has done and in concert really with our customers. But Jim, I have to tell you, I've never been more excited about Salesforce and what's happening with the technology industry. And we're super excited to get you to Dreamforce because you're going to see something that we didn't even get to talk about a quarter ago, which is agent force and how we're transforming our customers with this incredible new artificial intelligence. OK, well, tell us how uh, big companies are using agent force. I know already it's being employed. What's it doing for a bar big? What's it doing for ADP for this largest payroll processor? Oh, that's a great story. Well, Jim, you know, we have deployed agent force now to so many of our customers and we're so excited because what we're helping them to do is to deliver a level of automation with their customer service or with their sales that they've never seen before. And ADP is a great example. And you know, Jim, we already run ADP sales organization, but also their customer service organization. But now, Jim, when consumers call into ADP, they can actually talk to agents, not just humans. And that agents are resolving 90, more than 90% of all of ADP's inquiries. That is very exciting. And we've seen that same result in many of our customers. In fact, at another amazing customer that you know very well, OpenTable, well, they have 160 million consumers that are working with their service. And their deployment of agent force, well, it's also resolving more than 90% of their customer inquiries. And it's directly talking to those consumers as they have issues. So you not only have automation of the sales organization and the service organization, but now you have an extension of these organizations with agents. And why that's exciting, Jim, is this. For the last two and a half decades, what Salesforce has done is helped our customers build a great sales force, a great service force, a great marketing force, even a great commerce force. And now we're helping our customers build an agent force. And this is a breakthrough thought. All right. So this morning, uh, my colleague David Faber, who uh, appreciates your work greatly, was talking about Klarna, which is a very good company. I've worked with I them. love David, yeah, by the way. Who doesn't? It, it, Bell loves him, That's but that happens to be his mother. Uh, and we were talking about, about Klarna, and he mentioned, you know what, Klarna's now cutting off Salesforce. They don't need Salesforce. They're trying to figure out exactly what to do with AI. To me, that seemed like... Uh, I'd like to know more. Let's put it that way, because what to do with AI may mean using Salesforce to do better with it. Well, I think what customers are doing is transforming, changing how they use information technology. That's a great story. In fact, you probably saw on LinkedIn, Jim, that Klarna just posted how they're using Slack to deliver a whole operating system to run their company in a whole new way, using our new artificial intelligence capability that is manifested through Slack. Now, in the quarter, Jim, we delivered, since we're talking about AI, 25 trillion, that's trillion with a T, Einstein transactions, which is this AI capability that's managing the agents and managing the predictive and managing the slack and all of these capabilities to all of our customers. And we've powered more than 1 trillion workflows. That is accompanied by 250 petabytes of data. So that's across our, all of our customers, hundreds of thousands of customers. Each and every one of those customers is doing three things, Jim. One is they're automating every customer touch point. That's automating the sales organization and service and marketing and commerce and all those things that we've talked about for years as customer 360, right? The second thing these customers are doing is building a data cloud because you need this amalgamated data 
to deliver this excellent, accurate artificial intelligence capability. And the third piece is they're delivering agents. And these agents are the next generation of artificial intelligence where you're able to go out and talk directly to your customers with AI. So it's the AI talking to the customer themselves. So uh, the applications, automating your humans, the data cloud, amalgamating your data, and then the agents who are talking directly to your customers. Okay, I want more use cases. For instance, uh, a friend of mine put together Wyndham, okay, just a fantastic company, the largest hotel chain in the world. And I'd like to know exactly what you're doing for Wyndham because they are an excellent company. Another great story, another great story who's using agent force to talk to customers directly about what they are doing uh, with their products. And of course, you know, you're, you've made your hotel reservation, you've got questions, you're getting ready to come in. You're, you can talk to a human being or you can talk in many cases directly to an agent. And why that is important, Jim, is because we're able to take the ebb and flow of customer demand and we're able to kind of meet that as, you, as, as the customer needs it. Let me give you another great example with Wiley the textbook company who's also using agent force. They have incredible seasonal demand right now when kids are going back to school and they're able to use agent force to directly expand their customer service capability. And instead of hiring or trying to surge their customer service organization and train all these folks, which by the way is what they've done in the past, now they're able to just use agent force to take that additional That capacity. makes so much sense. So, no, I get it. I get it. Agent. So rather than hire a, a full-scale, huge suite of people that is only used during three months, you have these agents that are used during three months, and you don't have to do that. You don't have to let people go hire. You don't have to train people and not use them. No more what we used to call Goldman Sachs dead wood. Terrible Jim, term. it's an amazing moment where humans with agents are driving customer success. Jim, humans aren't going away. No, you know. No. We're, of course, you know, we're automating all these customer touch points with our apps. We're building the data, and now we're deploying agents. This is the three levels of AI. And Jim, customers have done a lot of science experiments with AI over the last two years. I've never seen so much money wasted by customers <laughs> trying to build their own AI. It's crazy what has happened. And some of these huge companies like Microsoft have told those customers to go train their own models and build their own models and then retrain their own models. Jim, we've built all that right into our platform. So you can build your model and train your model and fine tune your model in our platform. You don't have to go do that to some hyperscaler. And Jim, inside that platform then, of course, you're automating your whole company and now you're able to deploy automatically all those agents. It's all one piece of code. So your sales, your service, your marketing, your um, commerce, your analytics, your Slack, all of this is in Salesforce, your data, and now all your agents. It's an incredible new thought in how to automate a company Completely. in three tiers. Now, you did say that, you, that humans uh, aren't going away, but one is Amy Weaver, whom you introduced me to, does excellent work as CFO. <laughs> when we always have to ask when a CFO leaves, why, what's happening, and you have a replacement. Jim, it has been an amazing story with Amy Weaver, who came in more than a decade ago as our general counsel. And as you know, four years ago, when Mark Hawkins, who was our fourth CFO, right. decided to retire, she decided to come in and kind of take three or four years. It's been incredible, incredible transformation that she's led to be our CFO and to move from our general counsel to be our CFO. And she's decided at the end of the fiscal year, which is next February, in 2025, she's going to step down. She'll still stay with the company for more than a year or more after that to onboard the new CFO. And yes, Jim, we've hired Hydric and Struggles, uh, incredible person, Jeff Sanders, who we've worked with for 25 years to find our new CFO. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for a lot of folks uh, that we're talking to internal candidates and external candidates who want to be Salesforce's sixth CFO. This is that moment. Understood. A great honor to be one of those. I, I understand. Operating, non-operating, no, I'm sorry, non-gap operating margin, a stellar 33.7, up 210 uh, basis points. That makes me feel that maybe the IT environment has gotten a little bit better. Jim, I think we're just in an incredible new environment. Okay. And I think that the technology is like nothing I've ever seen before. And every company understands because they're using these new AI models at home or personally, 
But now we can really show how they're going to get value for their companies to do four things. We've talked about this. So it's, now we're able to manifest it, and we have these amazing stories like we just talked about with OpenTable and, and ADP or with uh, Wiley or with Window. It's amazing what's going on. So, so but the people is, understand this. I mean, maybe they have to come out moment. the Dreamforce because I feel like some people say, "Wait a second, this is technology. We don't know how to use it. It's costing us a fortune." Like, like you said, I mean, does it just have to be uh, a a, tor a story told in order to realize the savings rather than realize the expenses? Jim, at Dreamforce, we are going to light up for our customers. Every single one who comes to Dreamforce, I'm going to turn agents on for them. So you come to Dreamforce, you want to know about how to automate all your customer touch points, we're going to do that. You're going to want to know how to amalgamate all your data and federate all your data clouds into our data cloud, we're going to do that. And now for the first time, Jim, we are going to turn agents on, sales agents and service agents. And if you know, remember, Jim, we're also building the agents for Workday for HR as well. We were just on with Carl Eschenbach. So Agent Force is becoming this incredible new platform that you can even build your own agents. Well, this is and making... that is what we're going to do for customers, and we're going to do it for them there. This... So we're going to have thousands of companies turned on at Dreamforce with Agent Force, and that is going to be a remarkable thing. And what they're going to do is they're going to be able to connect with their customers in a whole new way. And we've got the stories that are so inspiring with what these customers are already doing. And we're working, I'll just tell you one thing, I'll, sure. I'll give you what a little F bit it's of- just you and me at this point. point. Jim, you gotta, I think, listen to this, this is amazing. The largest healthcare company in the United States who has the largest Epic database- Kaiser. It, with 20 million consumers is resolving more than 90% of all of their patient inquiries right now with Agent Force. That's incredible. It that is, is incredible. Remarkable. Right, well, that, like we're going to have to leave it. We won't, we won't be going seen. out to Dreamforce if you give it all away. So let's say right right here, this is a, this is a Mark Benioff who's a bullion, as they say. I, will Jim, see. I am so excited I about the future. That. It's I'll incredible. September 17 to 19, I will see you. And uh, I'll also see Tiny Dancer. Jim, I'll see you there. Thank you, Mark we Benioff. Can't wait to have you. It's all the best. Hey, money's back after the break. Coming up, Kramer is no secret shopper. He's on the record and hunting for retail deals. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.